Once you've cut out the front for your stuffed animal, you're just about ready to start sewing circuitry to it. So I like to put the controller board here right on the belly and then the, the smart sewable RGB LEDs right where the eyes go. And I do this just because then everything is on one side on one piece of felt, uh, which is great for your first e-textiles project. Uh, however, before I have students sew these items down with conductive thread, I always make mine uh, practice with upholstery thread. And I actually color code each uh, piece of thread that they're going to sew, each connection. So I'm going to start here with black, which is going to be the ground connection. And I'm going to pull off about, I'd say, I, the connection is going to have to go from ground here up to here and then over to here. So I, I like to use about twice as much just to make sure I don't run out. So uh, probably maybe like 16, 18 inches here. And then I'm going to make sure that I lock that thread in here so it doesn't uh, get all tangled up in uh, my supply bin. Okay, so as a reminder, I want to start a few stitches away from here. So I'm going to start back over here. And I'm just going to put my thumb and forefinger right there so that I can kind of remember where I'm starting. So right about here. Now I can move the circuit board away for now. I'm going to move my eyeballs away for now. I'm going to sew up and then down. And then to keep things from coming undone, I'm going to do right over left. And then left over right. I think the knot is now far enough away from where we're going to sew the circuit board down that we won't have to worry about glue uh, getting on the circuit board. So I'm going to go ahead and put it right here. And then I'm going to sew through the ground connection here. And I'm going to pull it tight. And then sew up fairly close to it. But I'm not going to go through the same area that I came up through the first time. I'm going slightly to the side of it. Now I've got my second wrap. And again, I'm going to go in a slightly different area for my third wrap here. I'm coming up in three different spots to maximize the surface area between my thread and the circuit board. So now that I have three uh, wraps, it's time to tie some half hitches to keep them from coming loose. So I'm just going to pick one of these stitches here, go underneath it, and then come wrap around like this, go underneath the piece I just sewed, that will be, after I pull it tight, my first half hitch,
my second half hitch. And now my third half hitch. Now that I have my controller board securely fastened to the felt for my stuffed animal, I'm going to sew up towards the first eyeball. Notice that the length of my stitches, uh, my stitches are about a quarter inch in length. You don't want to make them too small, you don't want to make them too big. They don't need to be exactly a quarter inch, but they do need to be in the ballpark. I'm aligning my Smart Sewable RGB LED so that the arrow points that way towards the next one. And I'm sewing to the negative uh, pad on it here. When you pull your thread, make sure you don't pull it too tight. You don't want to have it scrunch up like that. So we're going to loosen it. I'm going to go through, go down a slightly different area here. And again, I'm going down a slightly different area to try and maximize the surface area and minimize the stress on my felt by spreading it out. Now I'm going to tie three half hitches to keep that from coming undone. Okay, I now have a secure connection for my stitch board to, that will control everything to my first uh, eyeball. Now I'm going to sew over to my next eyeball. I'm going to sew down, uh, instead of sewing straight across, I'm going to sew down just a little bit just to give uh, the other lines that we're going to have to sew a little bit of space because we don't want the any of our uh, connections to cross if they do that'll create a short circuit and it will prevent our uh, circuit from working correctly now it's time to place my next eyeball and again, I'm making sure that the arrow is pointing the same way as over here, and I'm connecting to the negative pad on this eyeball. I'm going to sew one more stitch down right before it, right below it. Again, to keep those uh, wraps from coming loose, I'm going to do some half hitches to a neighboring stitch here. It's a little bit tight right there, so I'm actually going to do my half hitches to this stitch right here, just to make things a little bit easier. So I now have three half hitches that are securing the loops around the negative pad on this eyeball. 
But I don't want to end here because if I put glue here, I'm afraid it might get into this, uh, these wraps, flow through them, and then insulate this connection. So I'm going to sew a little bit away from that connection. And I'm going to tie some half hitches right around this stitch right here. And then cut the thread, but leave a tail about, I would say like that. We want to leave a relatively long tail so that the knot doesn't come undone. Once you've sewn your first thread, make sure you show me or your teacher and that uh, either I'm satisfied or your teacher's satisfied with the work you've done. The things I'm going to be looking at is... Uh, I'm going to be looking at the length of your stitches, that they're about a quarter inch. I'm going to be looking at how tight the wraps are around your um, uh, connections to the circuit board. I'm going to be looking to make sure that you've connected all the right uh, pads on each board. I'm going to be looking to make sure that you started a few stitches away from each board and ended uh, from a little bit away from each board and that you actually tied half hitches every single time you came to a circuit board to keep those wraps around the circuit board tight. I'll also be looking to make sure that you did leave a little bit of a tail because if you don't then when it comes time to glue it it's going to be a little bit of a problem. Once you've finished sewing your ground wire I like to do the signal wire. The signal wire could be connected to any one of these pads that are numbered. This would be pin 0, pin 1, and pin 2 of our ATtiny85. Uh, we could connect it to pin 1 or pin 2, but if we do that, then we run into kind of a weird issue, which is we would have to sew, we can't just sew across this thread or this thread to get to our eyeball. We would actually have to sew around those and I can't connect to this end of my eyeball because the data needs to actually flow this way. So I would need to sew from either one of these pads all the way around my eyeballs and then into this uh, pad right here. And then a separate thread from here to there. That's kind of a roundabout way. So I'm going to actually sew from this uh, zero pad here because then I can just sew a little bit to the side and then up and directly to here. It's going to be a little bit of a hassle because these wires are sort of in the way, but it's not that big a deal. I'm going to use some green thread just to uh, uh, keep things straight so I know that it's not my ground and I know it's not my power, which should be red. It doesn't really matter which color you use so long as it's not black or red. I'm going to go ahead and make my thread about, I'd say, 16 inches long again, somewhere around there. And I'm going to keep it from making a big mess in my supplies box by locking it back down into the spool there. I am going to start uh, probably about a half inch away from this pad. So I'm going to start over here and I'll come up from the underside. And go back down. And tie a square knot. The rest of this process is going to look very similar to what I did with the black thread.
I'm now going to sew back towards where I started because I want to, instead of, instead of sewing straight up along right next to this black thread where these two threads might touch, I'm going to sew a little bit away so that there's no chance that they touch and they don't shorten, mess up my circuit. Be careful not to sew the wires connected to your battery pack down to your felt. It's important to realize, to understand that this connection, this thread, is not going to connect over to the second eyeball. The, sec the connection between these two needs to be a completely separate thread. It cannot, it cannot be connected to this one in any way. And that's because each one of these is addressable. This is addressed as the, the zeroth uh, uh, smart RGB LED and this would be indexed as the one so uh, when we when we're referring to it in code we'll refer to this one as a zero and this one is a one we're able to do that because this one comes before that one if they're both connected to the same thread then they would both have the same address and that would cause a problem for us So this is the first part of our signal wire connection. I've done the first part in green. I'm going to use blue for the second part that's going to connect from this pad over to this pad. And I'm going to use blue just so that it's absolutely clear that it's a completely separate um, piece of thread you're going to use when it comes time to use the conductive thread. I don't need a very long piece because it's such a short run. So now you can see two separate pieces of thread connecting the signal pads for this circuit. Um, 
There, nothing is crossing. The, the green and the blue do not cross over the black, and the green and the blue are not connected. Now it's time to sew the power line or thread in my circuit. And I can do that in two ways. I could sew to this power pad here. You can, you can tell it's a power pad because it's got the plus sign right there. I can sew all the way around over to the power pad on this uh, uh, smart RGB LED and then over to this one up here. Or I can sew from this power pad over up into this power pad and then to the next one. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. I've had students do it both ways. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it the second way just because I like the, the way it looks. My red thread here is about two feet um, and that's because this is going to be the longest connection I have to make. Everything you see me do is going to be pretty much the same as the previous connections. Again, as you sew the thread for your power line, make sure that none of your stitches pin the wires connected to your battery pack down to your felt. As you come up to the narrow area here uh, where you have to navigate between your signal thread and the edge of your felt, you want to make sure you don't get too close to the edge of the felt because eventually we're going to be sewing uh, the front and the back together and you don't really want to sew through your uh, power thread or power line. All right, now we have the electronics sewn to the front side of our stuffed animal. All of our lines uh, do not overlap each other. They give each other plenty of space so that there's no risk of them touching each other, shorting out, and then somehow ruining the circuit or impairing it from functioning properly.